for many people, dividing fractions tends to be difficult just because they don't know how to set up the problem. And so our goal in this lesson is to not only explain how to divide fractions, but explain why it works the way that it does so that you understand why we divide fractions using the idea of flip the second guy and multiply, as most people know it by, or multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to start with just a basic division problem and use that to help us get into what we're doing when we're dividing actual fractions. So this one says, what does 4 divided by 2 really mean? Well, one way to think about it is how many groups of 2 go into 4. That's what 4 divided by 2 means. So if I look, here's a group of 2, these 2 together, and here's a group of 2. So 4 divided by 2 equals 2, because two groups of 2 go into 4. So that's what this means using whole numbers. We're going to take the same idea and use it with fractions. Now, in reality, in this lesson, we should be using fraction circles again, and we don't have them in front of us, so we'll continue to use the clipper at once. Hopefully, we'll get the idea. This one says, what does 4 divided by 1 half mean? Well, we're going to write it out the same way as we did the last one with the whole numbers. So instead of a 2, we have a 1 half here. So we're going to say how many 1 halves go into 4 this time. All right? Well, to do that, here are my 4 holes. I'm going to have to split them all in half because we want to know how many halves in the empty each of these. So those two are cut in half. This one in and this one in. So now I can see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are 8 halves in 4. And another way to think about it is 4 times what equals 8? And that's times 2. So I can solve this problem two ways. I did it with division, but I can also change it into a multiplying problem, which then we don't even have to worry about the fractions in this case. And you'll notice that what we did was we took our four pieces and doubled them all, times them by two to get eight. That's what we were doing. All right, well, what if we have two fractions that we're working with? What does one-half divided by one-fourth mean? Well, how many one-fourths go into one-half? So here's our one-half. I'm going to highlight just one-half of it. Here's our one-half. I want to know how many one-fourths will go into a half. So here's our one-fourth pieces. If I were to lay one-fourth pieces on top of here and cover up the whole circle, I could see that one, two, two one-fourth pieces go into a half. So I'm going to put equals two over here. Another way to write this problem would be one-half times four or half of four because we cut the whole thing into four pieces and we took half of it. So we took this division problem and changed it into a multiplication problem. Notice that we flipped over that second, that second fraction. One half of four means to take those four pieces and I want to know what half of it is. We're going to try one more. This one's just a little bit more complicated because we're going to switch our fractions around. Same fractions we were using before, but we're writing the other way this time. What does one-fourth divided by one-half mean? Well, it means how many one-halves go into one-fourth. Now, you may be thinking, well, a half is bigger than a fourth, so a whole half doesn't go into a fourth. And you're right. So our answer is going to be a fraction. So here we go again. Here we have one-fourth over here. So I'm going to shade in my one-fourth because I want to know how many halves will fit into this one-fourth. And then, to figure out how many halves go into this fourth, I'm going to shade in half of this fraction circle. And now you can see how much of this half piece fit into a fourth. I can tell that half of that piece fit into there. So this equals one half. One fourth divided by one half is one half. Or if you notice up here, I took one-fourth of two pieces. Because I had two pieces, here would be one half of the circle, here would be the other half of the circle, and I cut it up into four pieces. So one-half of two equals two-fourths, which the 
simplifies into one half. And you may notice what we did with that second fraction is we flipped it over. So what are we really doing when we're dividing fractions? We are flipping the second guy and multiplying. That's kind of the unofficial way that we say it. But basically, exactly what we were doing is we kept the first fraction the same. We changed the division sign into a multiplication sign. And we flipped the second fraction over. We are multiplying by the reciprocal. And then we're simply doing what we were doing in the last lesson with multiplying fractions. We can just multiply the numerators, multiply the second, the denominators, and then simplify. And if you remember, I'm going to use our little trick from before that we could simplify here. Three goes into three once, three goes into three once, four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice, and I'd end up with one times two is two, one times one is one, so our answer is two. So let's try another one. We won't do all of them. Four fifths divided by one third. The first fraction stays the same. The division sign changes to a multiplication sign. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. We're flipping the second guy in the second fraction and multiplying. So this one I can't cross simplify at all. So I'm just going to multiply straight across. Four times three is 12. Five times one is five. And then I can simplify and get that five goes into 12 two times. That would be 10, so we'll have 2 fifths left over. Just like when we are multiplying fractions, if we have a whole number to change it into a fraction, we're going to write a 1 underneath it. And now we're going to do just like we did in this other problem. The first number stays the same. The first fraction stays the same. Our division sign changes to a multiplication sign. And we multiply by the reciprocal, or flipping that second fraction over. Again, in this case, we can't simplify it all first. So 5 times 4 is 20. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 goes into 20 6 times, which would be 18. So we'll have 2 thirds left over. So 6 and 2 thirds. And we're going to try one last problem. We'll do this one over here. So to like when we're multiplying again, if we have mixed numbers, first we need to change them into improper fractions. So 1 times 5 is 5, and 5 plus 1 is 6. So 6 fifths. We're going to multiply, change the division sign to a multiplication sign, and flip that second fraction over, be multiplying by the reciprocal, or 10 over 3. And in this case, I can simplify first. 3 goes into 6 and 3. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 twice. 5 goes into 5 and 10. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into twice, two, 10 twice. And I'm left with 2 times 2 is 4, over 1 times 1, which is 1, and I get an answer of 4. So basically, multiplying and dividing fractions. With dividing, we just have one extra step, and then we're going to do it just like we did for multiplying. And that extra step is to multiply by the reciprocal, or flip the second guy and multiply. So remember, the first fraction stays the same, change the division sign into a multiplication sign, and flip the second fraction over. Again, if we're working with whole numbers, make sure you put a 1 underneath this to turn it into a fraction. And if we're working with mixed numbers, make sure that you turn it into an improper fraction first. Then you can flip the second guy and multiply.